We are just minutes away from the senator coming here. He will be sitting right here at this table, but before he comes out, he'll be uh, greeting voters as he walks through. Yeah, Brad, the rain tonight has not kept these ralliers away. We are walking in the streets of East Jackson on Chester Street. But earlier this morning, around 940, when we first got here, there were several women running from the side of the bank as policemen were just arriving. People will begin mingling in after they've come back uh, from the polls where they've been working to campaign all day long. Yeah, Kelly, police are searching for multiple suspects after two shootings just after the 4th of July, each sending victims to the hospital. Then he'll make another appearance at Parker's Crossroads starting at 4 o'clock. For now, we're live in West Jackson. Jordan Hall, WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. A 24-hour surveillance camera system surrounds the parking lot here at the Justice Center, and it didn't take him very long to find. He went straight across the street through this yard, and about 200 yards down the road, deputies knocked on the door at that address. People become victim to crimes of opportunity because they leave things in plain sight. We tried to call the number at the YMCA, and it's been disconnected. The headstone is wrapped in police tape, and although the wording is mostly erased, it doesn't erase the seriousness of this crime. Brad Kelly, the victim, Anthony Riggs, lived next door to an antique mall where he had just come by to show off his new companion. But hours later, the owner of that mall tells me he was dialing 911. Let me see what you got there. Charlie Butler meets a lot of people in his antique store. I meet a lot of people from all over the world. He had just become good friends with a couple who lived beside him, but when a woman came over screaming for help, he never expected to find Anthony Riggs dead in that home with his newly adopted companion, his suspected killer. He'd come in quite often, and he happened to come in yesterday morning, and he'd got him a dog, and it just all went from there. He showed me the dog yesterday morning, and he went home, and when she got home in the evening, she found what had happened. The Madison County Sheriff's Office says that five-year-old Rottweiler attacked and killed the 67-year-old Thursday afternoon. When I got over there, at the time they come in crying and all upset, I didn't know what had happened. Uh, but yeah, when I got over, the dog was trying to attack her, and we had to, it was a job to try to get him out of the house, but we did finally get him out, and the sheriff showed up. They showed up, and they took care of the rest of it. Deputies put down the dog, fearing he would attack the people who'd gathered outside. It's just one of those tragic stories that, you know, we want to encourage people to adopt pets, but then you have a situation like this that occurs, and it just, it's just mind-boggling. You know, it's uh, disheartening. Today, I did speak with the health department about its policy on adopting dogs and whether they tell new owners if the pets have been aggressive in the past, but they say they wouldn't comment on their policy until this investigation is over. In studio, Jordan Hall, WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. If hate is inside of you, hate will do nothing but eat you up. That's the message Greg Cherry learned as a descendant of the Haley family. But just a day after their annual family reunion, this message, which reads, White Lives Matter, appeared on his ancestor's grave. They're going to have to actually remove it. Limestone marks the grave of Queen Haley, who was hated by many when it was revealed she was biracial. Everyone turned their back on her and treated her disgracefully. Queen Haley is an early ancestor of Alex Haley, an author and journalist known for pinning the book's roots, which later was turned into a miniseries. Not once did he mention we should be proud because we're black. He said just be proud of where you came from and where you are now. Some in Savannah believe the vandalism in this cemetery could stem from other issues. Heritage is one thing, but uh, uh, everybody's discussed what that flag means. Recent discussion to possibly bring the statue of Nathan Bedford Forrest, a Confederate general and KKK leader to this community, is just one of them. You'll see that flag being involved in, in all of those uh, massacres and, and hangings and lynchings of uh, African-American people. I'm a full-fledged rebel. These controversial flags are flown by residents. It's just part of, it's part of our heritage. Cherry says he stayed quiet, but with this message written directly on the family grave, it's time to get involved with the discussion. I'm hurt that someone would think that only one life mattered when we all matter. It's a reunion of old friends inside this downtown Selmer pharmacy. I was glad to see them because they're all old friends there. People have known for a long time. Memories shared by those who have grown up here. And people closer we all are together. I mean, uh, it, it, just, it just goes back and uh, of course you do build good memories from that. But Monday is bittersweet. The same people in the community still come here that's, that's been going, coming here since they were kids. And, uh, and of course, again, it's just the sheer fact that Mr. Bobby Mitchell was here. 
that made a whole lot made a whole lot of difference. Tuesday afternoon, Bobby Mitchell will lock up his pharmacy for the final time, working here since he was a high school freshman, not knowing it would be the same place from where he would retire. Well, of course, the kid didn't think that far ahead. I was working here when I was a freshman in high school. You know, twenty-five cents an hour, five cents coffee. Five cent dip ice cream. Mitchell and his wife Tommy went on dates here, talking in a booth which is still there. We both grew up here. We dated in high school and then uh, went to Memphis. He went to pharmacy and I was in nursing. And uh, after he graduated, then we got married and uh, came home. He later took over and worked with his wife for more than 20 years. Of course, he was the boss. I understood that. Everybody understands that. <laughs> <laughs> but turning 80 this year, Mitchell says it was time to make some decisions, which means this pharmacy, with so many memories inside, will now become a memory itself. This was our family, and it's, it's going to be difficult to close this door tomorrow and lock it. The building will soon be vacant, but the couple says they can now enjoy life with family and friends, and most importantly, one another. In downtown Selmer, Jordan Hall, WBBJ7 Eyewitness News.